Hey, welcome to Tony's Cool Tools. Thanks for stopping by. Today is March 21st, the first day of spring. However, as you can see behind me, we're still buried in snow. For I know that some of the folks down south have been wearing t-shirts with the weather they've been getting. So the topic we're going to be discussing today is very appropriate. So we use safety glasses, earmuffs, and chaps for protection against danger. But what do we use for dangers that we don't see? Like the ticks in our woodyard, forests, and gardens. So let me discuss that with you today. Still pretty cold out here. Let's get inside and I'll show you some stuff. So today's video is more of a PSA, a public service announcement, than anything. We do have a ticking time bomb out there, no pun intended, but we have a lot of ticks and bugs around us, and they can cause us a lot of problems. Health problems, that is. My wife and I were dramatically introduced to Lyme disease in 2004. That's when my daughter was 14 years old. She had some friends over in the lower level of our house, and we heard a scream, and when we ran downstairs, we found my daughter collapsed. We called an ambulance and they took her to the hospital. And after many, many months and days, we finally found out it was tick related or Lyme disease. Now she was 14 years old at the time. She had lost the use of her legs. She was paralyzed basically from the waist down. Now Lyme disease affects people differently. For my daughter, it was neurological. And for many months, she could not walk, and she had to relearn how to walk. Now, she's 33 years old, so that was 19 years ago that's happened, and we're still living with the effects of the Lyme disease. It's extremely debilitating. Any of you who have watched Chris in the Woodyard, about a year and a half ago, Chris got bitten by a tick. And he didn't think about it at first, and then all of a sudden, he started feeling really bad. Chris hadn't gone to the doctor for quite some time, but he finally had to go in and he did get some antibiotics and he did feel better afterwards. About a week or so later, I too found a tick on myself. I was fortunate enough that I got to the doctor immediately and got antibiotics, so it wasn't too terribly bad. And previously I had been bitten multiple times and had waited before I got antibiotics. And I know how he felt pretty bad. Tick bites and Lyme disease are nothing to play with. So the first key is being aware of the dangers that you have, both in your wood yard, your gardens, and your forested areas. You pretty much bet that there are ticks out there waiting for you. If you notice, there isn't much out there about Lyme disease or ticks until you get it. And then you start searching for it and you find bits and pieces throughout the internet or friends or somebody who knows somebody who has been bitten. And then trying to find a Lyme literate doctor is almost impossible. Mainstream doctors seem to just give you antibiotics and away you go. But you have to treat the symptoms as well. Ironically, you can find more information about Lyme disease at your vet. They seem to have a map that shows all the hot spots throughout the United States. And Wisconsin happens to be a real hot spot. So the moral of the story is if you are outside, check yourself often. Sometimes you don't find a tick until the next day and it's dug in already. By no means am I a doctor, a nurse, or an EMT. And this is not a tutorial. I'm just letting you know how I take care of ticks when I find them on my body. So first, if you happen to find a tick on yourself, the easiest thing to do is just use your nail and see if you can scratch it out. More often than not, they're already dug in by the time you notice them. And you try pulling them and their head is attached. So the first thing you don't want to do is grab your wife's eyebrow tweezers and try to pull them out with this type of a head. They do make extremely pointy tip tweezers that will work better, but I truly don't recommend them because when you squeeze the head, you can pop it off instead of bringing it out. And the key is you want to bring the body and the head out. The second thing you don't want to do is grab a cigarette punk or some kind of a hot piece of metal and try to burn them out. 
They don't come out. They stay in. The third thing you don't want to do is coat the whole body with nail polish or Vaseline thinking that you're going to stop them from breathing. That doesn't work either and they do not back out. As I mentioned, the main thing you want to do is pull the head and body out all as one piece. And what I found that works best is a tool that's called a tick twister. Let me give you a close up of it. Here's a close up of the tick tweezer. And this is only one brand. There is multiple brands out there. I will have a link where to purchase these and now they come with three assorted sizes and a tick identifier as well and they're very inexpensive under five dollars. Here's what they look like out of the package and as you can see they're little slits right there so you can slip the head on whether it's a small deer tick like this one here or a large wood tick standard wood tick like this one. Let me give you an idea of how they work. If you're a carpenter, you know what this tool is. It's called a cat's paw. It's for removing nails out of boards. And the way it's done is, if you could picture this nail head as a tick's head, it just goes right inside here, and then you just twist it and pull up, and the tick is removed. Same thing holds true for the small deer tick, the real tiny one. You use the small tool, put that in there, and same thing, just twist it out. And of all the times that I've pulled ticks out, I have not once pulled the head out of the body. And another tick removal tool is this key fob tick remover. Super, super simple. I don't use it on my body, but I do use it on animals because it does work pretty good. Let me show you. This one too has this little groove inside and you wanna make sure that you hook the body or the head in there and this one happens to be too large. Let's use the smaller one. That fits in much better. And then you just pull it out. But as I say, the tick twister works much, much better than this tool here. Now I owned and hunted German short hair pointers and drafars. And pretty much after every hunt, I had to at least remove one or so ticks out of their bodies. And typically it's a day or so later and as you're petting them you notice a bump in their fur and when you go to inspect you already find a tick that is engorged. And this tool right here is invaluable for removing those out painlessly. Now one thing I forgot to mention was I've been bitten several times and have embedded ticks in my body. And every time I do that and I do remove them, I may be paranoid, but I keep them. I date it and I keep them in these Ziploc bags. So in the event that I ever do get seriously ill, I have the tick that bit me and they could test it hopefully to see if it has Lyme disease or if it's something else. These tick kits are so inexpensive that I keep one in every vehicle and in every first aid kit. So I can either help myself or help someone else out who might have a tick embedded on them. And for those of you who are farmers or raise chickens, the best way to control ticks are either with ducks, guinea fowl, or chickens. They love eating those little morsels and do a great job of it as well. And though many people hate opossums, they are the best vacuum cleaners we have in our forest. They can eat thousands of ticks in a week. So here are a few products that will keep ticks from getting to your skin so they don't bite you. And ticks typically crawl up on you. So you want to make sure that your pants are as tight to your boots as possible. And they do make a gaiter that goes around your pants and your boots so that the tick can't crawl underneath your pants. And they also love to embed in areas that are tight like your, the tops of your socks, your underwear, or for women, their bras. And I'll be showing you a spray that after you put the gator on, you spray your shoes and the gator, which repels the ticks. The next option is an ankle garter. And for those hunters who wear waders, you love these things because they keep your pants tight and you can pull your waders on. Now that we've covered our pants and our boots, the next place we want to cover is our arms. Now I have heavy duty arm chaps that I use and these are fantastic when I'm stacking wood and I put them over here, I don't get any rashes on my arms 
or I can go ahead and pick blueberries through very thick foliage and not scratch my hand as well. But they're pretty heavy and they don't cover all the way up. So ticks can get inside here. So the next thing you could look at are these UV arm chaps that they have out there. They're meant for active people when you're bicycling or if you're fishing or whatever so that you don't get burned. But they are also fantastic for seeing any kind of ticks that crawl up here. But as you can see, they only go to a certain point here and the bugs can still get or the ticks can still get inside. But these are real nice. They're very lightweight and I use them for uh, stacking wood as well. They're not as good as my leather chaps, but they do work great. And here's another variation of the arm chap. A little bit different and I'll explain in a minute. Chris from In the Woodyard had a guest stop by, Anne Marie, and she brought him a set of these arm chaps and I really like them. First, they're cut resistant, so they offer some protection that way. Secondly, they offer a Velcro strap right here so I can tuck my shirts underneath here and the tick isn't going to get inside as easily. Thirdly, they have this thumb wrap on it so that it doesn't crawl up my arm. And I can put gloves on here easily as well. So when I'm stacking, I have my gloves and then this, and it works excellent. So you get several benefits. UV protection, cut protection, you can stack with these, and bugs aren't gonna crawl up that easily. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you go online or Google it, you'll find clothes, both tops and bottom, that have been sprayed with permethrin and will last the season or two. After a lot of trial and error and research, I found one product here that I feel works extremely well, and it's this Sawyer spray. And there are several reasons why I like it. Oh, and by the way, I'm not sponsored, nor do I get the product free. First and foremost, this product has permethrin, and it's a product known to repel ticks. And it comes in both a spray and an aerosol. And after it's applied to clothes and it dries, it's odorless. You definitely don't want to breathe the fumes when you're spraying this. The second thing is you coat your clothes, not your skin. Now permethrin bonds to your clothes fabric. So it'll adhere to your clothes for up to six weeks. Or you can wash your clothes up to six times before you have to respray. I usually take a couple pair of jeans and several shirts and take them outside on hangers, spray the clothes liberally until they're somewhat wet, and then let them dry overnight. And then there's no reaction with my skin. Sawyer says it reduces the likelihood of getting bitten by a tick by 73% if you coat your shoes, your socks, and your clothes with this product. That's pretty impressive. And in the couple of years that I've been using it, I am sold on this product. My friend Dick introduced me to a product after letting him know about the Sawyer product that I was using, and he said he found something that works equally well, if not better. And it's not necessarily this specific brand, but it's the type of product. It's made for equine or horses. And if you notice, in the summertime, they're constantly swatting flies with their tail or twitching their ears and everything else because the flies just eat them up. And they also have a lot of ticks on them as well. This type of product is a spray used for horses where you spray the horse down and it's okay to spray it on their skin. And unlike the Sawyer, which you're not supposed to touch the skin with it. However, my buddy Dick does not put this on his skin. He coats his shoes, pants, and shirt every time he goes out. And he has extremely good results. He's restoring 150 acres back to prairie grasses. And as you know, that's where ticks hide, are in grasses. Now, as I said, it's not specifically this brand, but it is the horse spray for equine. And if you look at the front label, it definitely says flies, gnats, and ticks. And since we're talking about bugs, the last thing I wanted to show you was a product that I found a couple years back that I've been using and having tremendous results with it. When I first started my channel nine months ago, I did a review on this product. It's video number six. Now this product helps control mosquitoes. It's called Spartan Mosquito Protec. This product was introduced about seven years ago and it was exclusively for the commercial market, primarily golf courses. 
They didn't want mosquitoes bugging the golfers. And it was so successful, they decided to offer this to consumers on a retail basis. This product is all natural. It uses sugars and boric acid, and it attracts the female mosquito, which is the only one that bites. Not saying anything about women, that is. Now this kit consists of two tubes, an instruction sheet here. And the product is in a powder form inside the tube here. Let me show you. It comes with two different caps and I'll explain why. But that's what it looks like, almost like sugar. And what you do is, there is a fill line right over here. And what you do is you fill it with warm water, 80 degrees or below, but you want to make sure that you fill it all the way to the top at the beginning of the season when you put this out. And as I mentioned, it comes with two tops. This white top, so that after you pour the water inside here, you put this one back on, twist it on, and you shake it to dissolve all the crystals that are in there. And since you're using 80 degree water, it usually dissolves very quickly. After you're through with that, you change the tops to this black top right here. And it has holes right here on the top and the air or the gases that form with the boric acid and sugar attract the female mosquito. And they actually come inside here and at the end of the season I find when I empty this out, there's just a glob of mosquitoes that are dead inside there. And then all you do with this one is you put this and you hang it on the tree like that. The instructions are simple and easy to use, but as you can see, there were only few steps and you're ready to hang the product. And it does come with this chart, very similar to a gardener's chart with zones one, two, three, four, and five, same thing here. Naturally, the folks down south are gonna be installing these sooner than I am up north. Spartan says if you install four of these, that will cover up to one acre of protection for you for 30 days. Now, I only use two of them in my house or my area. I keep these in the front of the house and the back of the house, 80 feet away from the house on a diagonal and it covers my whole area. So if I'm on the deck, I don't get bugged with mosquitoes as much. Now naturally, at night the mosquitoes come out in fury, so it doesn't work super well after dark. But during the morning or afternoon or early evening, I'm very satisfied with the results that I get from the Spartan products. Now as I mentioned, they say that it lasts for 30 days. What I found is it lasts much longer for me. Now, if you're in a low-lying area with a lot of water and standing pools of mosquitoes, you might have to do it every 30 days. But for me, I usually change it once a season. I buy a pack of four. I start at the end of May and then go through the end of September. So I only change it out one other time. So that's why I buy the four pack. Now you can find the information on all the products that I've covered basically in the info section below. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to write a comment and I'll get back to you with it. And if you've already purchased this last year or after my video, let me know what you think or how it worked for you. Well, I hope you found this video informative and if so, please like, share and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up as well. And remember, pass it forward. Make the world a better place. And don't be a tool. Watch Tony's Cool Tools. Until I see you next time, have a great one.